but um, we're starting and it is recording. So we'll just go and then he, we do have to, we have a hard stop at seven because there's another meeting that is going to jump on this Zoom uh, ID. So we'll have to, but I, I think that's fine for the first meeting. We should have no problem with that. Sure. Um, so we'll do a little housekeeping. We'll do a lot of housekeeping today, I think. A um, couple of things that I think we need to get out of the way. One, I'm not the chair. I don't want to be the chair. I'm not going to be the chair. I just, I'm the first one who's going to start this ball rolling and then you guys decide who you want to be the chair going forward. Um, and then we'll, we'll introduce ourselves. We'll talk a little bit about open meeting. We'll talk a little bit about the law and then what our mission and goals are out of this committee. And then we'll take questions. That makes sense. Why don't we do introductions? Because I don't know if everybody knows everybody, but maybe they do. Um, Peg Conniff, I am on the city council. I'm also on the board of directors of East Hampton Media. And uh, my interest in this goes back to last fall. Um, I've been working on this uh, for a few months with Joe Banis, actually. We've been doing a lot of research and um, and so J when JP brought this forward, it was really good timing in January. So, uh, so yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing how we can help seniors. Um, Jay, you want to uh, introduce yourself? Yeah, Jay Andrasik, uh, resident. I, um, <clears throat> when the school um, was being discussed, uh, I was very concerned about the impact this would have on uh, fixed income seniors and was told uh, during that process that uh, that Owen was going to the, uh, present legislation to use the uh, marijuana money and uh, lo and behold the Commonwealth and in its infinite wisdom refuses to allow us to uh, use money that we collect locally the way that we want to use it so uh, there's got to be another answer. And I was so happy to see that this came through. And uh, I want to do everything that I can to, to help make this happen, effectuate this change as quickly as we can. Awesome. Great. Um, Brendan? Yeah. Uh, hi, I'm Brendan Rogers. I'm the director of the East Hampton Council on Aging. Um, this was talked about in our board some time ago. Um, but at the time, we didn't really have anybody who identified as wanting to be part of this process. Um, and then Joe Banis kind of really, you know, pushed me into thinking about it. And uh, I ended up connecting Joe with uh, Peg, of course. And uh, since then, we've, uh, you know, kind of combined our efforts. And unfortunately, the pandemic has put things on a little bit of a delay. But uh, here we are. And uh, we're really excited about this. Um, when we look at income with seniors, um, we see it here all the time through uh, community outreach. We just have way too many people who are relying on very small pensions or social security income, and it's just not enough. Um, so I think it's time for the city to be proactive and um, to stop our you know, most vulnerable population from falling into uh, you know, financial crisis, especially now more than ever. <laughs> JP? JP Kwasinski, city councilor, uh, resident to be Stampton since 1993. Grew up in Northampton. Uh, the seniors in our community have always served the community in great ways. And I think one of the difficulties has been that uh, the, as fixed incomes are played out, you find that you just can't live and support yourself. So the expenses of taxes, insurance, sewer and water, electric bills, medical bills, food bills, just as they pile up, become such a burden that it's very hard for folks in that position to be able to look at the community and say, yeah, we want, we, we, we want a new school, we, we want to support a new school, and then find the money to do a new school, but the school gets voted in. Whether you were a senior in favor of the school or not in favor, we're all still paying the taxes. As seniors face all these questions, uh, it seems to me if there's some way to find good relief and create good work for our community, we ought to be doing it. We ought to be doing it as fast as we can. Now, I think 
if we are able to implement something, the earliest I think it can happen is with fiscal year uh, 2022, that's July 1st, uh, 2021, uh, because the budget uh, scenario will have to be affected such that our recommendations and taking in all the factors, and there are a variety of factors, both pro and con, and giving that information to the counselors to and to the mayor to be able to decide if it makes sense for our community, how we can budget that into the into the budget and how much it's going to cost. So all those questions are in my mind, and I am so thrilled that you're all here to help uh, work on this, and I hope we can also have input from folks that aren't members of the committee. Yeah. So I appreciate everyone being here. Thank you. Thanks, JP. Stan? Hi, I uh, moved to East Hampton in 2015, so I am the newcomer. Um, in addition to this group, I also was instrumental in starting East Hampton Neighbors. I'm the vice president of East Hampton Media and come from a very, very, very progressive upbringing in New York City. Um, and, you know, this seems like something that needs to be addressed and relief needs to come to people. And, you know, I may be at some point one of those people that needs it. So uh, I am on, I am retired, I am on fixed income. Uh, we'll see what happens down the road. Yeah, so yes, I'm also retired. So I, I do think of those things too, Stan. Um, so great, uh, that's great. I think we all are coming from the same place, which is we recognize that um, whatever we can put in the toolbox for seniors to get relief is gonna be good. I don't think there's any single answer. I think it's a combination of a lot of different things and, and this is one of those things. So I'm um, glad you're all here. I think, um, I, think it's, I think it's gonna be a lot of work, but I think it could be uh, really cool. I'm trying to find the agenda madly because <laughs> I had it. And now I don't have it. What? I'm doing the same actually. Oh, there we go. Okay, I found it. Um, so, yeah, uh, so we don't have anybody here from the public, but we will always have that on the agenda as a thing if anybody wants to come because of open meeting laws. Um, and so I'll segue right into new business uh, and kind of go down to the open meeting law thing. So we are a public body of the city, and so we will have to behave accordingly. And so our meetings are public. They need to be um, advertised uh, within... 48 hours, uh, yep, 48 hours of um, them happening. So whoever ends up being the chair, there are certain protocols and I'd be happy to walk you through that at another time, but you'll have to get the Zoom meeting scheduled, get the information to the city clerk and make sure that we have enough advance notice um, for getting it in the newspaper and all of that stuff for advertisement. Um, we will likely also put this on our city council agenda for updates periodically. It's not like regular committees where every city council meeting will need an update. I'm gonna guess quarterly would probably even be sufficient unless we really get rolling and then we wanna do it monthly or one meeting a month. But, and that's kind of, Tom Peake today is on uh, the telecommunications committee. He's not the chair, um, but he will give us information. So it's not like the chair necessarily has to come to city council. We'll leave that up to individuals. There he is. I'll, I'll wait till you get your audio connected, Joe. There you go. Let me unmute you. Maybe. Why can I not? Can you unmute yourself, Joe? Oh, there you go. Can you hear me now? <laughs> yes, we can. I don't know. My mouse must not have been working well. Um, Joe, we just kind of went through introductions. Would you mind mm -hmm. um, introducing yourself to the team? Sure. Um, I guess a little more formally, uh, my name is Joe Banus, and uh, I am a recent, well, maybe not so recent, retiree from the uh, federal government. Um, I guess my academic uh, training, I'm a conflict researcher, and that was the nature of the work that I did or at certain jobs for the uh, government. 
And at, at present, I'm a native, or I am a native of East Hampton, and I currently reside in East Hampton, and I'm a member of the Council on Aging. So. Awesome. Thanks, Joe. Basically it. Oh, you, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, that's fine. Oh. <laughs> You're going to tell us more. We're all willing to listen. Yeah, we'll <laughs> listen to anything. <laughs> I was just I was just kind of briefly Joe just talking a little bit about the structure so in a few minutes we'll um, we'll decide a chair for this going forward um, but I wanted to just kind of give a lay of the structure of how we're going to do this from an open meeting law perspective um, mm -hmm. whether or not all of you are familiar with open meeting law I'm going to give you kind of a, a primer and then I will send you the link to the document it's it's a long document, but the long and short of it is there's a, there's a couple of things that we have to do as a public body. One of them is advertise the meeting. One of them is allow public to be at the meeting and uh, that we can't talk about things that are not on the agenda. So if we want to, of course, pretty much our agenda is this topic. So um, we should be okay there. But if anything else gets introduced or we want to go off on a tangent, we need to put that on the agenda in order to do it. We'll you know, firm up some of those as we need to, but that's the basic gist of it, that because we're public, we have to maintain that transparency and allow the public to participate. Um, all right, so I'm gonna leave this up to this group. So, because I just, this thought just went through my head. Do you want to, my preference is yes, let's name a chair right now. Would you want to, I can't believe I'm giving this as an option. Do you want to ruminate about thinking about it or JP, what do you think? Should we name the chair tonight? I, I think that uh, as long as it, it isn't uh, I, I think it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> chair this evening. So I think it's, that's, that, that's a great idea, Ted. Let's and, we know it. It, and we know it can't be Jen. So um, that leaves really just the four. Jen, Jen isn't here. <laughs> yeah, but it, it can't be her anyway. Um, oh. All right. so. We can go into that right now. So um, if if you are all amenable to that, kind of, and oh, and let me back up. So we're gonna use parliamentary rules here. So basically there will be motions, there will be seconds, and then there will be a vote. And we will do that with the naming of the chairs. So uh, I will take nominations from the floor right now for individuals to be the chair of this committee. Given the background that uh, that I've been given at this meeting so far, I see no reason not to nominate Joe uh, for this position. You see, I'm sorry, you kind of cut out there, Jay. You see no reason for what? Uh, to to not nominate Joe as he has been the driving force behind this thing for months now. It sounds like. No, I I I, I second that. Who are <laughs> <laughs> Which Joe is. And, uh, That's what happens I, when you show up late. We can't hear you, Joe. So. Oh, I'll well, let <laughs> uh, Do we have any other nominations on the floor? Oh, sorry, Joe. <laughs> Bye. Joe, is there any reason that you are unable to uh, carry on this honor for the year, or do we have to go to the runner up? <laughs> you know you're the best uh, leader, Joe. I'm you here know to help. You. Well, I'll uh, be here to help. I wish I had a good excuse. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Joe. Yeah. Brendan, will you be there too? <laughs> I'll be there right by your side, man. <laughs> oh, yeah, that you, sounds it's, it's really <laughs> just, solid. We just need somebody to run the Zoom meetings. To be quite honest with you, that's all I do. So um, uh, it would it would probably be. Uh, a good opportunity to learn how Zoom works, and there you go. See, so, look okay. at that. Always learning. And, and, and Peg's a great trainer for for uh, for, for Zoom. The tri-state area, apparently. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> I Which will take. Which tri-state? <laughs> I'll take. Um, okay, so we have a motion and a second. Anything else? Okay, we'll vote now. Um, also, picky thing, but. When you're meeting remotely, you have to do roll call votes. So, sure. Stan Diamond. Yes. JP Kwasinski. Aye. Jay Andrezik. Aye. COA Zoom or Brendan. Aye. <laughs> Joe. 
Aye, aye. <laughs> <laughs> Motion passes. Joe is now the chair. I now turn it over to you, Joe. No, I'm kidding. Congratulations. Um, I mean, do I have to know anything about Robert's rules of order and parliamentary procedure? Just uh, the we'll, basics, and it's we'll basically do. just every decision we make is by motion and not, we'll help you through. Motion, you mean like in motion? Emotion. Emotion. There's a lot of emotion. <laughs> Um, oh, this is going to be interesting. Um, okay, so, and, and, and Joe, you and I can meet offline and we'll walk through kind of the particulars. Nuts and bolts, okay. So the other thing I wanted to talk about tonight was, are there, is this a good time to meet? Or as we go forward and meet on a regular basis, is this a good time to meet? And is now a good time to set the next meeting date um, for all of you guys? Is this a generally a good time? I don't know. Jay, yes. Jay, did you say Thursdays? Well, this Thursday I knew was good, but I don't know in general. In general, as long as I've got two weeks notice for something, it can be 7 a.m., it can be <laughs> 6 p.m., it doesn't matter. It sure you can. Of, uh, you can float <laughs> your hours? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Great. Um, okay, so why don't we call it Thursdays at 6? Um, I know okay. there's a property meeting at seven or maybe it's public safety i can't remember um but that's not a conflict and i don't think there's anything else on thursdays at seven so we'll set um we're looking at like the third thursday of that's the next question so uh, monthly meetings or weekly i <laughs> if i may just inter inter interject yep. if there's any hope in the in the overall planning process uh, again, budgets, the mayor really should have something solid, ready to go October or November to be able to plan the budget cycle. Because by the time November, December hits, there, there's already great planning going on from in receiving budgets from all the departments. So that's that October, November, if we're thinking the next fiscal year. If you're thinking making recommendations for at some point after that, uh, if it's in the affirmative, uh, we could go to a, a schedule that wouldn't be as aggressive, but I think that's an important thing. So <laughs> consider, and you know what, let's table that discussion for a second because I wanna talk a little bit about what this group has on their plate so that we can kind of gauge how frequently we need to meet. So the law as it's structured is that um, this, we have this option and we have this option up to, JP, you know the dollar amount, is it 1,500 or 1,100 or? It was $1,500 per, uh, per person. Year. Per person. Per year. And so that, that equates out to, you know, we'll do the fuzzy math, but we have the option of setting that amount. So it's anywhere from a high of 1500 down to whatever. So as an example, I've had conversations with, I want to say Fitchburg, theirs is set at like 500. And so, because that's what their budget could sustain. So you have to kind of keep that in mind that any, no, any amount of money we give um, in relief is money that the rest of the community has to absorb. So we have to make sure, so that's a certain balancing act. Um, the other thing we need to make uh, recommendations about, and we will need to talk to the department heads, is what kind of jobs might each area have and what would that look like? What would training entail? Um, all of the things that if you were gonna have someone come in and work ideally the entire 10 months, cause it cuts off after October, I think, right Joe? Mm -hmm. um, if you're gonna have someone come in and work for you for 10 months, up to 10 months, um, what, would you, what work would you give them to do? And, and this, is a, this is one of the negatives that we'll talk about in future weeks, the downside is that some of the department heads that I've talked to in other cities, sometimes people just are like, eh, I'm good with my, because you can get whatever you get up to a max. I'm good with my 300. I don't want to work anymore. 
I'm going to, I'm going to go back to my retirement and I'm done. And now you got to bring somebody else on because now that job is important that somebody do it. And I get to bring somebody else on and that's a lot of administration for department heads. So that's something that we'll need to really think about and we'll need to talk to the department heads. So there's however many departments in the city, that will take a while. Um, uh, one quick question, Peg. Did the department heads know that this is on the burner? They do, ish. They do, they do ish. Like, they do, <laughs> but you know, as with all things, it's not, it's not a thing for them until it is something that we sit down and talk a to them form, about. A formal proposal or whatever. Right. Yeah. right. I will tell you um, that scuttlebutt, from what I can have gotten, is that they're like, oh, this is going to be a lot of work for us. So our recommendation yep. has to be something that takes into account. It can't be overly arduous from an administrative perspective. They have a mm -hmm. job and they can't keep rotating people on and all of that. Yes, Brendan. Um, Thank you for well, raising your hand, Brendan. Yeah, well, I, I just think, I, I know it can be work, but for example, when we take on CSEP folks, uh, so when Springfield calls us and uh, you know we end up with someone that's coming here to work under our department. I mean, yes, it's some work, but in the end it can really pay off. And I've had people transition out of the CSEP program who've ended up working for the COA. Um, the last person who did that was doing publicity for us. Um, he transferred over, he did probably close to, oh geez, I wanna say probably 300 hours or maybe a little bit more than that underneath the CSEP program, which was essentially like having a volunteer um, for us. I mean, we weren't paying anything out of our budget. Um, and while he was getting paid like probably minimum wage to the CSEP program, um, it turned out to be a wonderful relationship. So I think, I, I understand, you know, where department heads think it might take a lot of work, but you know, there's a lot of dedicated seniors out there. And I think if they're just given the right tools um, that they can adjust to most work environments. And I think there's gonna be plenty of work. Um, I think already when we reopen, whenever that is, disinfecting every hour on the hour, that's a job in and of itself. So <laughs> very true. Yeah, there's gonna be plenty of work out there. Um, you know, and I, I think, you know, if we can just kind of work our way with department heads and advocate for it and tell them that it's not gonna be so much of a burden. And of course, um, you know, I, I'm curious as to how we'll, you know, oversee, I'm sure that the COA is gonna play a big role in vetting some of these workers, I'm yeah. assuming. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, uh, and again, mm -hmm. that's however we structure it. Right. <clears throat> right. So, yeah, but I, I, I think this is, you know, I, I'm really optimistic about this. And, yeah. yeah. So, the, uh, you know, and, and the counter argument to what I said before is I've also talked to cities who have a waiting list of people to get mm -hmm. in there to take the job. So <clears throat> it, it's, it's the cultural um, makeup of the community and how much they want to, what the jobs are, you know, how, um, how we make it so that they kind of want to do them. Um, and so it'll be very interesting, but I think, you know, once we start to dig into some of the other communities, um, we'll get a lot of really good ideas. So um, some, of, some of them are really successful, actually. Uh, Westfield, mm -hmm. Joe, did we talk to Westfield? Did you talk uh, to Tina, uh, Westfield? Tina Foreman's the executive director of the Council on Aging, and she's the, the point person who does a lot of the work. Oh. Yeah. The mechanics of the program. So we, we did talk to her, and we have all kind of documents from her about how, you know, the messages they send out and when and job descriptions. And so it, it should provide a pretty good uh, model for how a program could run. Yeah. So yeah, so there there is kind of a, a certain degree of of work and talking to the uh, department heads and figuring out all of that kind of stuff before we make the proposal to the mayor. Um, uh, Peg, yes. If I can ask one quick question, are the, I'm the money? At a calendar. That's what that. I'm sorry. Okay. The the money for these folks are is that coming from the department's budget, or is, or is it coming from another location? Well, it's it's really coming off of the. Um, it's it's it, well now you guys, it, JP, you keep being honest here. Doesn't it come off of the the tax bill that they pay? What they are assessed. 
from a tax perspective? The tax bill, I believe technically it comes from the tax overlay, which is an account that I really can't explain this evening, but I, I believe okay. that's where it's coming from. It's not coming, well, it wouldn't be coming from an individual department's budget per se. Uh, and then there would be an accounting of hours turned into in the, in the proper fashion, mm -hmm. appropriate taxes, uh, federal taxes assessed. I don't believe there are any state taxes on um, these That's earnings, correct. But they, but they are earnings. Uh, so all of that gets put in. So yeah, to answer the question, the, the budget, uh, it doesn't come out of the individual department. So there won't be any resistance there. This really should be, I think, seen as an addition to services and something we provide not only as relief for seniors, but as a way of targeting some be a real benefit to the community. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, okay. So does everyone have a copy of the, the kind of the MGL for the senior tax work off program? I'm just trying to get an assessment of what I need to send out to folks. Do you, are you guys all know how to get there? Because I'm happy to send out the link to the MGL. No, Stan, you're saying no? No, I need, I need the link. Okay. All right. I will send that out. I will send out the open meeting law. Um, okay. I'm taking minutes because that's the next thing we're going to talk about. Um, all right. So, so you, I, depending upon I was going to say summers are hard, but none of us are going anywhere. So, um, yeah, that's the truth. <laughs> do you want to meet more than once a month? And and JP, I'm not sure I necessarily agree with you on your on when we need to get something to the mayor. I think it's I think we'd be okay if we even got it after the turn of the calendar. But um, if we want to have something kind of pre-packaged or mostly packaged by November or December, that would probably be a reasonable first draft or last draft or something. So if, let's see, that's, where are we? What is today? Uh, one, two, three, four, five. So six months-ish um, of work. So. Which is a good plan, but I think we, we need to also allow for some time to spread the word. Um, in order get, to learn. get people to attend this as well, like uh, department heads, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, I, we can either go every third um, Thursday or once a month or twice a month. It's entirely up to you guys. I'm okay with doing it once a month. I mean, it's, it's pretty... I mean, like, you know, like Jay was mentioning earlier, I, if I get enough, well, we'll have enough notice because it'll be the third Thursday, right? Um, but I, I, once a month is fine for me if it's fine with the rest of the group. And should we set it as the third Thursday of a month, of the month? So it's standard, we can count on it? Sure. Would that be easier? And then we can, if we need to, we can change it on any particular month if we have to. So we'll we, could also, we could also call an additional meeting if things get busy and we need exactly. to get things yeah. done. Mm -hmm. Yep, okay. There's it. Okay. The last bit of housekeeping is minutes. So that's another requirement of open meeting laws is minutes. Um, I will take them for tonight. The, uh, the good news is that we record this and it will go up on um, East Hampton Media. So if you end up being the person who takes the minutes, you can always watch it and write the minutes from that, which is not unprecedented. Um, so we can do one or two things. We can rotate it each week, somebody else does the minutes, or we can just name somebody to always do the minutes. I think we should rotate it. I don't know what you guys think. That's good to me. Rotate, JP? Yeah. That is uh, certainly an acceptable. And, and, yeah. <laughs> as long as you're not doing it, yeah. <laughs> and by the way, this is my rotation. So I'm done, no. Um, <laughs> so if you guys are good, then Let's that's have more you. meetings. Say that again? What'd you say? Let's have more meetings so you can <laughs> have another turn. <laughs> uh, well, question. you 
Will Joe I, announce the person at the next meeting who is responsible for? Joe? I think we'll just set it. You know, we'll <laughs> okay. like we'll put it on the agenda, I, or okay. you know, I, we'll, or who's ever sitting in the meeting, we can just set it. Um, just Make sure you're there, Brendan. Yeah, you're next, Brendan. <laughs> <laughs> um, and again, I will for anyone who's not uh, have not has not spent a lot of time writing minutes. I'm happy to send out a template. It's very basic. People think that they need to write the transcript. They do not. The most important things are the decisions that were made, what the votes were, and what the general gist of the conversation. If there is if there were uh, dissenting votes, why? If there are passing votes, why? Very briefly, a couple of sentences. We don't have, because we have the video, and uh, we don't it, it, we don't need to write a transcript. So it's not as hard as I think sometimes people make it. Um, okay, all right. Is there any way within Zoom where you can transcribe the audio automatically? Have them as no. Because you can do that, you know, on on uh, on Google. Yes, you can. No, uh, YouTube rather. You can. There are things in Zoom that you can do if you pay an extra license fee. Uh -huh. And we've already upped our license fee a couple of times, so we're yep. not going to. Okay. <laughs> I was trying to get um, closed captioning, which I actually Jen and I are supposed to talk to to figure out how we can do closed captioning. Well, once it's on YouTube, it'll automatically do. Right, but I want to do it live somehow. Aha. Uh because, -huh. you know. Okay. Um, did that, we did that, we did that, we did that. So, um, so I would, I would at this point, what with the decisions we've made is we've named the chair for, of Joe. We've determined the uh, times we're going to meet. We're going to meet once a month on the third Thursday. We may meet more. We reviewed a little bit of open meeting law. We talked about who's going to take the minutes. Hello? Is that me? No, we hear you. Oops. Whatever happened, happened. And it it's stopped. an echo or something. Um, and a little bit of the review of the MGL. I don't, I, do you guys want to go through it here or do you want to do that as a side reading thing? What do you want to do, Joe, as our chair? Um, let me just make sure it, we're talking about uh, Title Nine, Chapter Fifty Nine, Section Five K. Yes. Ace. Okay. Fifty Nine Five K. Part One. Yep, that's it. That's MGL Fifty Nine Five K. Um, yeah, and it's it's you know it's not that long. It's mm -hmm. two or three days. You should have it read. Um, I. Uh, Perhaps you can share, we can, Joe, whatever you want to talk about. I think we're all adults here, so uh, it could be a little bit of a read ahead. <laughs> okay. Some homework I mean, but I do prior to the next meeting. Yeah, I do think it's important, though, that we do read it because there are yeah. options in there. There are parameters. Um, there's, there's an understanding that, you know, how we do this, it does have to come from the mayor, and she has to approve it. Correct. So, um, that is it, essentially what our work product will be is a proposal of this and why we think this is really a good idea and the financials that we think it will amount to and how the the system will be set up and who will be accountable within the city to manage it. So that's really our charge. Mm -hmm. Um Okay, that was kind of everything I had on this particular agenda, but I am very happy to talk about other things because I know, Joe, I don't know if you have any other things you want to chat about and then we can open it up for questions. Uh, I'm happy to just, I mean, being somewhat of a newcomer, I'm happy to just listen, be a fly on the wall and you guys spill all the secrets. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, Who's going to talk about defunding the police? <laughs> Joe, that is not on the agenda, Joe. Oh, I stand corrected. Yeah, we cannot. No, oh, God. Um, okay. Anything else? Any other question that is relevant to this particular committee? You guys are quiet. 
Uh, what about the idea of the of the uh, Google repository? Oh, good something point. We can we can accomplish uh, in the interim. Start to post things. Be able to read, and that might stimulate some ideas about how we can draw this out in the best fashion. Uh, I certainly see myself uh, contacting a few additional programs, maybe some deep dive into the various departments in various cities. Uh, and and looking at maybe one city from all the different levels, because I'm sure there are different perspectives uh, on the program from the recipients of the funds, uh, those who do the work, to the department heads, to the uh, accounting department that has to process the bills in, in, in this uh, from various chief executive officers. So kind of try to get a sense from those right. different perspectives to see if that might help to add, in addition to the nuts and bolts of various job descriptions. So I think the Google repository mm -hmm. is Yeah, I think Google that's help. a good idea. Um, yeah, so I don't really work with Google Docs that much. Are you, Stanley, were you thinking of just a Google Drive and then we all have access to it? Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Um, yeah, I think that's a great idea. I have some documents from my prior research and I'm looking at it now. Apparently I talked to Hadley, Middleton, Sterling, Pittsfield, Northampton, and Westfield. Wow. So I have anecdotal information from all my conversations with those folks and who I talk to, phone number, emails, and so forth. Um, so I'll get that on the Google Drive. I'll stand off, maybe reach out to you on exactly how to do that. Um, Jen would be a better resource. <laughs> Okay, I'll reach out to her. Um, and just and if, I, if I just might make take, make take a quick reminder, Peg. Mm -hmm. um, anything we do put on the on the drive would be not only be for us, but it would become certainly public documents. So not if they were, mm -hmm. it's our choice. Uh, I think as a public body, if we put something up on the repository, that the public has will have access to it. And that, so if there are private things that somebody says off the record from various town committees or various positions, I just don't know how we should handle that. Peg, any thoughts on, on the subject? Uh, uh, no. Share no. something. Yeah. And I want people to be candid about the, about the programs and not to feel that what they tell us is now gonna be over the broadcast the newspaper, yeah. right. Right. Uh, Exactly. Yeah. So let me think on that. Good. Just, and, uh, you know, honestly, I have to call the open meeting law lawyers anyway. So I will add that to the list of things I got to oh, ask good. them what we can do. <laughs> um, okay. I, I also just want to, if I can make this bigger so I can see it. Apparently, I made a table of how many participants some of these communities, oh, Northampton. Um, looks like they have roughly Third, and maybe Joe, you have this information too. As of last year, they had about 37, is that a three or a five? 37 people participate in Northampton. If I'm looking at this right, it's so small. Um, but that's the other thing. Some of the data that we will get um, will vary widely. Some communities which are small have an enormous amount of people who do it. Some of the small ones have almost no one. Some large ones have almost no one. It's, it really depends on your demographics and your, um, the economics of your community, I think. Um, but that's the kind of information I have, what their, what their top number is, um, how many people they do. Yeah, Northampton, I'm looking at it now. It said 37 was the highest number that they have had and they were expecting 20 19 to end higher than that. So um, 19 what's is the, apparently a year. Uh, Peg, what's the largest program you've come across? I'm trying to look at my spreadsheet. Um, Middleton had 50. Northampton had 37. It doesn't look like I have a number for Westfield. Okay. I, I, know, I know Hadley told me, but I don't have it written down. I think Hadley had... Um, Two people in two, uh, 2019 and one person this year. But the, the biggest program that I found was Ludlow, where they funded for 75 
different positions and they had 114 uh, applicants. Oh my God. Wow. That's great. That's amazing. What was there? Did, Joe, did it say how much the max was that each individual could go for? They must have done the math. Uh, the, the math for Ludlow, it was uh, the maximum uh, tax work off is $500. Okay. And, and I think you have to pay state minimum wage. That's how that's you, I mean, you pay. Um, that's how it's calibrated. Every hour is worth yes. 12 something of your tax. 12.75. Yep. So you multiply that by, that's how the math works, 70 times uh, the, the max thing, Perfect. and then you can back into the hours based on 12.75. I think, yeah, it's 500 divided by uh, 12.75, I think comes out to 39 point. Two or something like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. So, so those are some things to take into consideration as we go through this to figure out the total net. So, you know, we, we mm -hmm. can say we think twenty-five people will do it. Give them this a cap, and this is how many, how much it would come off of the tax roll. You know, keeping in mind that anything we do, the rest of the city has to pay because you can't get rid of the tax burden. You just are lowering it for some people, but raising it for others. Spreading it across. Differently. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that's totally fine with me. Um, okay, so the Google Docs, where we're going to put everything. Um, anything else? What else? Um, Question. It's the joy of having two screens. Um, what is the total tax savings each senior receives? So Middleton, they had their set at 1428 because that's how the math came out. So basically 1500. Northampton's 1500. Northampton has no cap on how many people can participate. $1,500 and no cap. Oh. They also uh, have an onerous um, income limitation. Yeah, they probably have a cap now. <laughs> um, <laughs> when Peg, when you're giving the numbers for Northampton, is that the senior part or the veterans part or combined? I have written here, the heading of my column is the COA, mm -hmm. but I also have another one. I got different information from finance and then the head of the COA. I think it's coming from the COA. I don't think I talked to the veterans. That's okay. a different exemption, right? Or is it rolled into this? Actually, in Northampton, I believe it's rolled into this where it's the same program with two different parts. Okay. Brendan? Can someone remind me, um, does the city uh, set the income eligibility for this program or is it driven by state? It no, is, no, that's the... There's a, I believe, because I've looked at so <clears throat> many of these different ones, isn't it mm -hmm. set by the, the lower low income setting it's for the state numbers income poverty level right so it's, it's okay. three times that and it's adjusted for household size as well okay but um, that's that's not within the the mass general law that's that is set at the municipal level i think it is set at the municipal level and when i read the uh, section 5k it doesn't say anything about income limits. Right. It doesn't? Okay. And yeah, North is, is very restrictive that, as far as income. So I believe the municipality would have the authority to make that determination. I believe. So that's something definitely to, to, for us to confirm. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think they do. They, they did set theirs up in that way. I don't believe we're looking at doing that. Um, the city council would have to vote on that? Is that something? The city council would have to vote on that. All right. And the mayor would have to approve it. Excuse me. Right. OK. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just double checking this again. Uh, so it is, so it's the responsibility of the city to make, keep all the records of everything. Um, 
JP, it says in here um, that at no time shall the amount by which the person's property tax liability is reduced in exchange for the provision of services be considered income, wages, or employment for purposes Correct. of taxation. That, that, that's for purposes of Massachusetts taxation. Massachusetts. Uh, there is a federal tax liability. Yes. Federal tax liability is, is, is still there. The Medicare uh, liability, I believe, is still there. Okay. So um, um, the IRS made a determination on that. They did a, the, they did a POMS on it in 2015. What? So there, there, were, there were actually, yeah, there was stuff going on there. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, okay, I'm just, okay. Um, okay. So there is a, yeah. So like I said, I'll get my data out there. I think Joe has most of the information. I created a spreadsheet every time I had a conversation and I see in it that some people didn't answer some of my questions. Um, I have things in there like, and not everybody answered, but like I have, like how supportive is the city for this and um, how supportive are the, the department heads and the mayor and what kind of feedback have you gotten from seniors about the good or badness of it, what kind of issues you have. Um, so one of the issues, and this was in Middleton, um, he said that you know once people hit a number of hours that they feel like that's good, that they just quit. And so what they ha what happens is, even if it's like close to the 10 months, it might be in the middle of the summer, they hit it because they've worked more hours earlier in the year. Mm -hmm. They are then left with this huge gap of a few months of nobody's doing the job that they had actually had a person doing it. And so that creates a little bit of a burden on the remaining staff because now they have effectively, they're down one FTE. So, um, so they, they try to incentivize the volunteers to stay even after they have hit the mark of their tax role. And a lot of them do, he said, a lot of them do stay. Some of them, you know, at, right at the hour where the max is hit, they're out of there. So, um, you know, all things to consider, not anything we can't overcome, just this is the kind mm -hmm. of stuff that's out there of feedback. Yeah, and I think if we have a waiting list like you know some other communities it probably would be a little bit put some department heads at ease you know if, if they're only seeing you know one you know one person in the lineup you know it's it's going to be difficult because yeah once you put that position away and i and i think it would not probably be a horrible thing if we if our proposal was for a pilot program yeah, smaller sure. in nature very focused uh a, a minimum amount of tax dollars so that we're not opening it up to 70 people and bumbling along because we the first year. Yep. So I think that's another thing to consider. Maybe we narrow it to one department, two departments and two or two or three jobs. You know, I don't know. Well, but something to think about in terms of how to set this up. Yeah. Um, to, to use the vernacular, a phased program. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> It's much more palatable if you get successes along the way than opening it all up and failing. You know, or, if you could just show some incremental of the, success. Some of the academics would say you need a few quick wins to show that it's a viable proposal. Exactly. And you build a little bit of enthusiasm and you take the scary away from it and then people, and word of mouth, and people are like, hey, this is not horrible. You know, I, I'm doing a little work. I was volunteering anyway, and now I'm getting a tax relief from it. So um, mm -hmm. I think it's pretty great. Um, any any other questions from anybody? Anything? Yes, Stan. Um, I would assume that these are part-time positions. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, I say <laughs> that, but it doesn't matter. It's 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 time. It's bound by the hours that get you to the max of the tax thing. If, if a department head says, I need you 40 hours a week, in like two weeks, you're gonna hit your max. Yeah, well, I don't, yeah, it's, they're not meant to be full-time positions. They're, ideally, they're spread out, you know, the hours are a lesser amount spread out over a longer period of time. Right. Yeah, but I, but I also wanna say, it doesn't preclude a department head from saying, 
I need somebody intensively for four weeks in the summer who wants to do it all and get it out sure. of the way. And, you know, I mean, uh, if it's more like a, a, a ta you know, a specific task that the, the department has had sitting around for quite a while and somebody comes in, puts a lot of effort into just getting it done. And then suddenly, you know, that's, you know, then the, the department can consider what other tasks, if any, they've got laying around to do. Right. Yeah. JP, I saw your hand earlier. Did you have another? I was just doing a calculation and I checked with Bob Dixon, the personnel director today, just to chat and check it. And he said $12 an hour for a minimum wage. Is that? No, well, it's $12.75. Okay. I think $12.75 is next year. I think, yeah, I think it starts January. Or so, okay. And in any case, the at the bottom of 5K, they will say uh, that uh, that the maximum number of hours, I mean, when you do the calculation, it's it's 125 hours. And 125 hours, I believe, will, will, will suffice for, was it 120 or 125 at the bottom? I don't know. But that's the order. So when we talk, start to talk about, can you do, well, that's what, like three weeks full-time work, three, yeah. and a half, three and a half weeks. Uh, and if you do stretch it out 10 months, how many, I, didn't, I haven't done the, the math, 10, 12 hours a week? Uh, no, a lot of 12, people, 12 hours a month, three hours a week, something like yeah. that. A lot of it depends on the nature of the, the job that you're asking somebody to Absolutely. do. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And some it's may be reason. short. Uh, some may have, you know, a three month, that's all we need you for, like an intern kind of sure. thing, you know, to, to document something or I don't know. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of levers that you can kind of calibrate this. Um, and I, you know, I. There I, seems to be a lot of flexibility in this yeah. uh, chap, um, chapter 59, section 5K, where the, it seems pretty flexible where the town can come up with something that, that suits it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's. That, that is based on, you know, how high do we want to set the individual limit? And if that becomes unpalatable to the city, if we set it at $1,500 and we think 30 people will do it, and they're like, ah, that's too much, um, then we get a little wiggle room and we're like, well, okay, how about 1,000? How about 7,750? Yep. All of that is, is negotiable, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, okay. Anything else? Sounds good. Okay. okay. Do so, we have any uh, further business? I don't think we have any further business, no. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. <laughs> well, wait a minute. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> um, I thought so I was I thought I was the head. That you are, but you yeah. have to let you have to let the public know when the next meeting is. Um, so today is what, the 18th? So third Thursday of right. the month would be July 16th at 6 p.m. So between here, here now- in, Here in cyberspace. Yes. Here in so cyberspace. Between now, Joe, and July 16th, you and I will sit down, we'll talk about Zoom, I'll show you how to do it. Um, uh, JP, I just had this thought, do people, do the other committees have access to all the Zoom accounts? They must, the chair. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, I don't think I'll give, I don't think we'll use the city council one, but there is a spare, we call it a spare Zoom account for uh, committees. So I'll mm -hmm. give you the ID and password to that. And you, what you do basically is set up the meeting and then we'll go through it. And you just send that to Barbara and the agenda that you want and we're off to the races. Cool. Um, Okay. Thank Joe, you. would you like to make a motion to adjourn? Uh, I'll, as the chair, I'll entertain motions to adjourn. Oh, I, look at you. You already know parliamentary <laughs> rule. Stanley. Stanley. So moved. So moved. So moved. Do I have a second? People. <laughs> you want to leave or not? You have to Brendan, second it. You want, okay. <laughs> would you like to second the motion? <laughs> second the motion. Oh, excellent idea. Okay. Um, I don't believe there's any discussion. No. So on an adjourn, there is no discussion. There's no discussion. Yeah. Um, 
and you don't have to take a so move. We all say aye. 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 Hi, Hi, everybody. Bye. Have a good night. Thank you so thanks, much. Guys. All right, thanks, guys. Thanks. Oh, great seeing you. Peg. I'll be in touch, Joe. Excuse me? I'll be in touch with you, Joe. While I'll set up a quick meeting with you. Appreciate it. All right. And thanks, I'll get the guys. i out very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye bye. <laughs>